There are a lot of different ways to bend wood, but today I'd like to talk to you about a technique known as kerf bending. Kerf bending is something you can do with solid wood or plywood, and essentially what it is is taking a piece of material and cutting a series of cross-grain kerfs all along the length. And this allows you to then take the piece and flex it so you can bend it around a form like this and then attach it with glue or screws and it'll hold that shape. It's a technique that's done primarily on the table saw, so let's head over there and take a look at how it's done. We'll be cutting the curves on the table saw, and it's a pretty simple process, but there are a couple of things to be aware of. First is the spacing of the curves. Uh, you want to make sure that they're close enough that when you bend and flex the piece, you don't have facets on the front. But you don't want to make them too close, because if you do, then the piece is weakened and it can break easily. So there's a little bit of trial and error here, and I, what I really recommend is having two or three extra pieces on hand so that you can do a couple of test runs to make sure you've got your setup right. Now the other thing that's important to notice is the depth of the curves. And ideally, you want the kerf to stop um, just about maybe a sixteenth of an inch short of going through the piece. And the reason for this is that you need to have enough material to hold the, the workpiece together but still allow it to be flexible. So in this case, this is a piece of plywood, and I typically try to stop um, just at the outer, outer veneer, and that is usually about a sixteenth of an inch for that last ply plus the veneer face. Now to space these curves evenly, I use a real simple little jig like this. It's similar to what you would use for cutting box joints, and all it is is a, you know, auxiliary fence that you attach to your miter gauge. And it has a hardwood pin that's glued into a small little kerf cut on the face of the, the jig. And that allows you to step the workpiece. After you cut the first kerf, you move it over and set that kerf over the pin. And then you just do that with, with each successive kerf. So that keeps them all spaced identically. Before we can start cutting the kerfs, though, I need to show you how to locate the first, your first cut. And you need to make that without this a uh, little jig in place. Once you make that cut, then you can attach this jig and start going to town on cutting the curves. So for this example, this is just a little stand I was planning to wrap with plywood and maybe set a laptop on or use it for something like that. And I want to bend a piece around this and attach it to the sides. But the question is, you know, where do you start making your first curves? And what I suggest is having an extra long piece to begin with. That way you can cut your kerfs where they need to be, bend it, and then trim the ends off so that you don't have to worry about getting everything perfectly aligned right from the get-go. So one way to figure out where to start is simply to take the workpiece and set it against your form, and then notice where the curve on the form starts and draw a line there, and that will be your first where you cut your first kerf. And then you just go from there, cutting kerfs all along until it wraps around the corner here. To set the initial blade height, I bring the workpiece up against the blade and then slowly raise the blade till it's probably, oh, maybe an eighth of an inch below. I like to start it low on the low side uh, and make a cut and then go from there. It's easier to raise the blade than to try to uh, put the wood back on. <laughs> So now that we've got the first kerf out of the way, we can go ahead and attach the auxiliary fence to the miter gauge. And I'm going to just use some double-sided tape to do that. Uh, you can also screw it in place or clamp it in place, but the tape works well for this purpose. So if I can get this peeled off here. And in order to position this fence, uh, I like to start with the pin about a quarter of an inch away from the blade. So I'm just going to use a ruler here and set that against the pin and line it up so that it is approximately a quarter of an inch away from the blade and then bring my miter gauge up to it and press that firmly in place. So now that we have the auxiliary fence attached to the miter gauge we can go ahead and start cutting the rest of the curves. Now I'm just going to place the first curve over that pin like so 
and I'm ready to go. Now here's why it's a good idea to make a test piece. After I cut all these curves, I went to try it around the form and as I was bending it, it just snapped right in two. And the problem is that these curves aren't deep enough. So I, I'll raise the blade a little bit and cut them a little bit deeper on my next test piece. And that should allow me to make this bend without having the piece break. Well, I've got all the curves cut on the piece and I've flexed it around the form to make sure that it will bend without cracking. So I'm going to go ahead and attach it. And what I've done here is draw a witness mark on the center of the piece and a witness mark on the center of my, my form here so that I can line those two up and get them centered. And then I'll just uh, throw a clamp on it here. And now I can carefully bend these around the corner Again, you got to want to kind of support it as you're bending it so that it doesn't snap on you. And I'll just add another clamp here. Go ahead and bend this one. And that fits around there. I can go ahead now and mark the end of this piece, take it off and trim it to size, and then put it back on the form. And one thing about kerf bending is it doesn't have a lot of structural strength, so you almost always have to have the kerf bent piece attached to some sort of, of base or backer like this. So in this case, uh, you could glue this directly to this piece, or you could drive some brads, nails in here to hold it in place. But once it's secured, uh, it's, it's pretty sturdy and steady. Um, these kerfs will hold, the bends will hold, and you're good to go.